Hey folks, welcome back. I'm your host, R.R. Slugger, and my lawyer has prepared the following statement. <clears throat> uh, Lego Rock Raiders is not a space theme. Well, kind of. <laughs> uh, all right, let's talk about it. For some context, last year I wrote an article for Brick Nerd titled Rock Raiders is a Lego Space Theme. In it, I talked about how the evolution of Lego Space through the 90s culminated into many of the features we see present within Rock Raiders. To be honest, I've just always considered the series to be a part of LEGO Space, and was surprised when getting back into the hobby as an adult that many people don't seem to agree. I think a large part of that is due to where websites like Bricklink draw the line. They have a profound impact on the nomenclature and categorization standards that we use in this hobby. So much of what Bricklink claims is true has essentially become truth by the amount of widespread adoption and repetition we've seen. For example, have you ever stopped and questioned the names we call some of these LEGO colors? Transparent neon orange, when it's very clearly translucent? Dark turquoise, when it's very clearly teal? In addition to this, Bricklink also links some themes together that I don't necessarily think had the strongest ties. A relevant example of this is classifying 1998's Ninja as a castle sub-theme. Now, if you're used to Bricklink's presence in the hobby's online space, then you probably won't bat an eye at this. However, I posit that if Bricklink didn't classify Ninja as a castle sub-theme, most folks would still be unfazed. There's simply no clear-cut definition on what should or shouldn't be considered a LEGO castle sub-theme. I guess what I'm getting at is that if back in the year 2000, Bricklink had decided to draw the line here rather than here, Rock Raiders is a LEGO space theme would likely be the prevailing opinion today. Again, Bricklink's impact on the hobby cannot be understated. Just like with Castle, there are no clear-cut definitions on what makes a LEGO space theme. Do the minifigures need air tanks? Life on Mars doesn't have them. Do the sets need to travel in space? Roboforce can't. Does the faction need to interact with other spacefaring factions within LEGO magazines? Well, that was something that was already dropped by the time of Insectoids, so who's to say? This is one point that I agree with author Tim Johnson on regarding his work on the book LEGO Space 1978 to 1992. There are no definitive cutoff points on what should be considered LEGO Space and what shouldn't qualify. In the end, it seems to be mostly about consensus of opinion, nothing quantifiable. To that end, I see strong arguments to be made either way when it comes to Rock Raiders. Even though the series does take place in a distant galaxy, some folks would argue that the lore shouldn't be a consideration and we should only take the sets at face value. That mindset would seem to suggest that Rock Raiders is not a space theme. At least until we look at 4910 Hover Scout more closely. If we're only going based off the set, then there's nothing here to suggest that the Hover Scout can't travel in the vacuum of space with its similar compatriots. Jet's fully enclosed Explorian style helmet would do the trick, and before you get on my case about the yellow hands, Life on Mars did it too. But Slugger, in the lore, the Hover Scout- Ah, either the lore matters or it doesn't. You can't have it both ways. Now, obviously, this is just a lighthearted example that I don't put a lot of weight in, but I bring it up because I think it helps illustrate just how blurry these lines become when you try to really hash out what qualifies and what doesn't. So why do I now say that Rock Raiders isn't a LEGO space theme if I wrote a whole article stating the opposite opinion? It's actually because of a fascinating response that the article generated. Suze writes, I can see why collectors would want to categorize Rock Raiders under space. However, I worked for LEGO R&D at that time. I also managed the Lugnet set database at home. LEGO had acquired the Star Wars license, which I believe restricted them from continuing with space as it had been. Rock Raiders was part of a theme that was internally named Underground. A future wave of sets were to be called Magma Mites. They lived in molten caverns and had flame-shaped heads, which would have been the first departure from traditional head shape. Our team pitched heavy mining equipment with electronics built in, and a computer control tie-in for the sub-theme. 
but it was a difficult era for LEGO and Underground was killed off. If you search through retailer catalogs of that time, you may be able to find evidence of Underground. Wow! This was written by Suzanne Eaton, who worked at Lugnet and Boston Futura at the time. To my knowledge, this is the first public mention of the name Magmamites, though the idea of Underground as a series has been brought up before, if I'm not mistaken. So, how can we interpret what was written here? Well, for starters, it sure sounds like the LEGO group did not internally consider Rock Raiders to be a LEGO space theme. They were apparently gearing up to make a science fiction spin-off series, much like they had previously done with Aquazone. In fact, this comparison is quite apt, as many folks out there consider Aquazone to be a part of LEGO space. Underground could have evolved into something very similar, futuristic vehicles on an alien world with alien life forms all around. Not LEGO space in name, but LEGO space in nature. The potential of Rock Raiders being a part of a larger underground series sends my head reeling with possibilities. You might think that I would be disappointed to hear that the LEGO group didn't internally see Rock Raiders the way I do, but the larger plans they had for it are so much cooler to me than any connection to LEGO space could be. Should we then consider Rock Raiders to be the sole entry in the underground theme? Well, in my opinion at least, that feels a little superfluous. Can it really be a series with only one sub-theme? Might as well just call it Rock Raiders and be done with it. <laughs> and wouldn't you know it, that's exactly what they did! At the same time, I don't think this new bit of info necessarily discredits the opinion to regard Rock Raiders as a LEGO space theme. Sure, it wasn't what LEGO had in mind, but I think it's actually pretty rare that we as a community use their internal names or classifications for things. Does anyone out there actually call this color bright bluish green just because LEGO does? All the same arguments for and against regarding Rock Raiders as a space sub-theme are still there, and just as valid as before. Ultimately, it's up to you to decide where it lands, not Bricklink or even LEGO. And it should go without saying that my opinion carries even less weight than either of those. Personally, learning that Rock Raiders was supposed to be part of a larger science fiction series that explored other underground environments inhabited by alien life only serves to solidify the connections to LEGO space for me, not sever them. The idea that Underground could have been its own mini-universe a la Aquazone makes me want to take a crack at theory crafting what these other sub-themes could have looked like. Hmm. Anyways, I'm curious to hear if this news has had any impact on your understanding or appreciation of the theme. For me, it's only made the heart grow fonder. Thanks for watching, everyone. I've been your host, RR Slugger, and I'll see you next time for some more high adventure deep underground.